We've talked about how to take a matrix and multiply by a vector. We've talked about how to take two vectors and multiply them together. That's the inner product. It is now time to learn how to take two matrices and multiply them together. Um, in order to discuss this issue, I think it's crucial to understand the setup and the context. So um, let's try to get that out of the way here. The general concept is, the reason I want to multiply matrices together is because I want to transform vectors multiple times. That's At least that's my perspective. So let's say that I want to transform some vector twice. So let's say that vector starts out in Rn. Well, I can use an m by n matrix, maybe called B, to take that vector V into Rm. So I multiply V by B. So now B times V lives in Rm. Well, maybe I want to transport that vector to another dimension, Rl, by multiplication by an L by M matrix A. Ultimately, this will produce a, a, a new vector, A times B times V. Well, um, the idea of matrix multiplication says, well, what if you didn't have to go through that middle step? What if you just went straight from Rn to Rl? Well, you can do that, what, but what's the size of the matrix you need? You'll need an L by N matrix. So the setup here for matrix, multi uh, matrix multiplication says, if you're going to multiply A times B, those two matrices must fit in a diagram that looks like this. B needs to go from Rn to Rm, and A needs to go from Rm to Rl. Well, that's the same thing as saying that B needs to be an M by N matrix, and A needs to be an L by M matrix. Now, if that's our situation, if I were to multiply these two matrices together, the purpose would be to construct a machine that takes vectors in Rn and produces vectors in Rl. That means that whatever this new matrix is, A times B, its size would have to be L by N. That's the context for setting this all of this up. So um, the shorthand that I like to remember, if I'm going to multiply a matrix A on the left by a matrix B on the right, well, um, the idea is that the matrix on, that I'm, I'm multiplying on the left with is L by M, and then when I multiply by another matrix on the right, that matrix must be M by N. So in other words, the number of columns of the matrix on the left must match the number of rows on the of the matrix on the right. And when I do multiply those two matrices together, what do I produce? I produce an L by N matrix. In other words, the number of new rows is the original number of rows of the matrix on the left, and the number of new columns is the number of columns of the original matrix on the right. So uh, this is the size issues. This doesn't even tell us how to multiply matrices together, but it sets up the compatibility criteria. So um, here's an archetypical example to illustrate size. So let's say that I wanted to take a three by four matrix, that's A here, and multiply it on the right by a four by two matrix, that's this matrix B here. Well, let's ask ourselves if this is even allowed. If I tried to fit this information into a diagram, remember I'm taking A in, uh, on the left and B on the right, but when I do my diagram, the matrix B is on the left here. This B is a four by two matrix, so it's a machine that goes from R2 to R4. And this matrix A is a three by four matrix, which means it is a machine that goes from R4 to R3. The diagram fits together perfectly here. So I am allowed to multiply A times B here, and whatever the rule for doing it is, I know exactly the size of the matrix I should produce. The purpose of multiplying these two matrices together is to produce a machine that takes us from R2 directly to R3 without having to uh, go through R4. So um, what is the size of A times B when we do this? It should be a three by two matrix. Um, so this example works out perfectly. Um, the shorthand here would be to take a three by four and multiply by a four by two. You kind of cancel those inner uh, uh, dimensions, the fours, and you're left with a three by two matrix. Um, here are those exact matrices, but in different order. So what if I tried to take my four by two matrix B here and multiply by a three by four matrix A? Well, I could try to set up the, uh, the diagram. Remember, I'm doing B and A times A here. So when I set up my diagram, A will have to go on the left and B goes on the right. Well, A is a machine that takes me from R4 to R2. 
three because it's a three by four matrix. And B is a machine that takes me from R2 to R4 because it's a four by two matrix. Three is not equal to two, so this matrix multiplication won't work. Um, the problem here is that uh, if I'm looking at the matrix on the left, the number of columns is two, but for the matrix on the right, the number of rows is three. So the lesson here is that we need to be really careful when we're setting everything up. Um, these, are, is, these are exactly the same shapes as the previous example where everything worked. So um, even though it makes sense to take A and multiply by B, it does not make sense to take B and multiply by A. So the order is absolutely crucial when we're discussing matrix multiplication. Okay, so that's the size criteria. It's important to get that out of the way before we actually go into the actual definition. Um, we're actually going to offer two perspectives on multiplying matrices together. The first is my favorite, and that's what I like to call the column perspective. So let's say that the, size, uh, the sizes are compatible. My matrix A is some L by M matrix, and the matrix B is M by N. That means when I, um, in my situation, that when I multiply these two matrices together, A times B in that order, whatever the rule we'll articulate in a moment is, it better produce an L by N matrix. And here's the rule. To take A and multiply by B, what we do is we take A and individually multiply by every column of B. So take the matrix on the left, and then for the matrix on the right, every single column is a vector, and we know how to do matrix vector multiplication. Take the matrix on the left and multiply individually by every column vector in the matrix B on the right. So um, that's how we multiply matrices together. So let's do an example here. So here I have a specific four by two matrix A on the left, and another specific two by three matrix B on the right here. The number of columns of the matrix on the left matches the number of rows of this matrix on the right, which means that this matrix uh, multiplication is defined. Um, if I wanted to think diagrammatically, this uh, matrix B is a machine that takes me from R3 to R2, and this matrix A is a machine that takes me from R2 to R4. Now, um, when I multiply these two matrices together using the column perspective we just defined, what is the size of the matrix we should produce? Well, the point of multiplying these two matrices together is to produce a machine that takes me from R3 to R4. So in other words, I should produce a four by three matrix. Now, what is that four by three matrix specifically here? Well, let's think in terms of the columns of this matrix on the right. I'm going to take my entire four by two matrix A and produce the first column of this matrix product by multiplying by the first column of B. The first column of B is one, one. So really what we're doing is we're adding the two columns together in A, and that becomes the first column of A times B. Uh, the second column of B is zero, negative five. When I multiply A by that vector, really what I'm doing is I'm scaling the second column of A by negative five. That gets me my second column of A times B. And then finally, the third um, column of B is one, negative one. So when I multiply A by one negative one, I'm really subtracting the second column from the first. I do that arithmetic and this produces the third column of A times B. So um, I'm multiplying A times B in this order because A is four by two and B is three by two, this should produce a four by three matrix. And the column perspective on matrix multiplication says we can build the columns of the product one by one by taking the matrix on the left and multiplying by the columns of the matrix on the right one by one. Um, here's a, another example illustrating the power of this idea. Um, in this example, I have the same matrix A and I've multiplied it by two different vectors in these equations. So this matrix A is four by three. Um, I multiply by one vector, B1, one, negative one, zero, to produce this uh, vector. And then I've also multiplied by this other vector, zero, two, one, to produce this other vector. Um, well, uh, what do these calculations do for me? Well, if I wanted to, instead of thinking of this as two equations, I can bundle these two equations in a single matrix product. So um, if I take this matrix A, the idea is that, well, I can, I can construct a new matrix and call it B, 
what are the columns of B here going to be? They're going to be the column, uh, the, the vectors that I've multiplied my ma matrix by above. So the, I'm going to set the first column of this new matrix B to 1, negative 1, 0. Well, because that's my first column, I know what A times B is. We just calculated that. That's negative 1, 2, negative 2, 0. So the first column of A times this matrix B should be exactly that vector. The second column of this new matrix B I've constructed is the second vector here I've multiplied by. I already know what the result is when I take A and multiply by that vector. That becomes the um, second column of A times B here. So the idea is that I'm, uh, I have two equations up top here, but I can bundle those two equations together in a single matrix product, A times B. Great. So that's the column perspective on matrix multiplication. It's absolutely crucial to understand the column perspective if you want to be successful in the course. Um, but there's also another perspective, which people use all the time, that I like to call the row perspective on matrix uh, multiplication. So once again, let's say that our, uh, the compatibility criteria is all working out properly. So I'm about to take a matrix A and multiply by a matrix B on the right. In order for that to happen, I need the number of columns of the matrix A on the left here to uh, match the number of rows of the matrix B on the right here. If that is properly set up, again, the size of the matrix product A times B should have number of rows equal to the um, number of rows of the matrix on the left A, and then the number of columns is equal to the number of columns of the matrix on the right B. Well, um, the row perspective says, if you want to look inside at every individual entry, there's actually a formula for every individual entry that ij entry is always an inner product of the ith row of A with the jth column of B. So um, this allows us to fill up any matrix product entry by entry with inner products. So let's see this in action. I'm trying to take um, the product of these two matrices. A here is 4 by 3 and B is 3 by 2. Well, I'm allowed to multiply a 4 by 3 by a 3 by 2, and uh, because the number of columns of this matrix on the left matches the number of rows of this matrix on the right. Now, um, when I do multiply these together, I know that the shape should have number of rows equal to the number of rows of A, and the number of columns should be the same as the number of columns of B. So let's fill up all of these entries. So this should end up being a 4 by 2 matrix. Well, what's the first entry? That should be the inner product of the first row of A with the first column of B. Um, so 1, 0, 1, inner product with negative 1, 0, 2. That should be 2 minus 1, which equals 1. What about the 1, 2 entry of this product? Well, that should be the inner product of the first row of A with the second column of B. Um, that inner product ends up being a negative 2 here. What about the 2, 1 entry of this matrix product? Well, that should be the inner product of the second row of A with the first column of B. That inner product look like, looks like it's also equal to negative 2. Um, what about the 2, 2 entry? That's the inner product of the second row of A with the second column of B. Um, that here ends up equaling negative 1. And so the idea is that I continue in this fashion, building every entry of the product as an inner product of one of the rows of A with one of the columns of B. So when all is said and done, I end up producing this specific 4 by 2 matrix as the product of a 4 by 3 with a 3 by 2. Excellent. Um, okay, so uh, explicitly, if you wanted to uh, look at the, the details here, the idea is that the row perspe perspective is describing every entry of A times B as an inner product. If I view the rows of A as vectors that have been transposed, um, if I take each one of those rows and take an inner product with one of the columns of B, that produces one of the specific entries of my um, product matrix A times B. So I know exactly where in each entry came from when I did the matrix uh, multiplication. So the, the, uh, the underlying principle here is that the IJ entry of the A times B is the inner product of the ith row of our matrix A with the jth column of our matrix B. Um, great. Now, um, here's just an exercise to see if uh, we're grasping the point here. Here I have taken a 4 by 5 matrix A and successfully multiplied by this 5 by 3 matrix B to produce this 4 by 3 matrix. One thing I want to point out is that there's a 0 in this product. Um, that is in the 3, 1 position. Well, what's that telling me? 
Well, that zero, which is in the three one position, was the inner product of the third row of A with the first column of B. Well, what does it mean for two vectors to have zero inner product? It means that they're orthogonal. So the data that I have here, I can just immediately conclude because of the zero in the three one position that the third row of A is orthogonal to the first column of B. That's just an exercise illustrating the point here. Okay, now um, we have a new rule. It's matrix multiplication. So let's try to survey the rules uh, matrix multiplication obeys. First of all, um, there's this thing called additive associativity, which means that um, if I'm adding matrices together, it never matters how I group my parentheses. Um, so there's a corresponding rule for matrix multiplication. For matrix multiplication, the idea is that if I multiply three matrices together, we've seen previously that the order that I write the matrices down in is absolutely crucial. But it turns out that it doesn't matter how I would group my parentheses in this expression. The quantity AB multi multiplied on the right by C is the same thing as the quantity BC multiplied on the left by A. So grouping parentheses doesn't matter, but the order that you write the matrices in is crucial. Um, there's also a thing called additive commutativity. This means it doesn't matter the order that I add two matrices in. Um, you'll note, however, that there is no um, uh, uh, matrix multiplication, uh, there is no multiplication, multiplicative commutativity. As we've seen before, the order we write matrices down when we multiply is crucial. Uh, there are, however, distributive laws. If you take a quantity B plus C and multiply by A on the left, you can distribute A to those individual matrices on the left of B and C, do the matrix multiplication and add together. And there's also a right distributive rule. If I have the quantity A plus B and multiply on the right by C, that's the same thing as AC plus BC. Um, there's also an identity rule. Now, remember, when we multiply the identity matrix by a vector, the vector doesn't change. Consequently, um, if I take any matrix and multiply, it turns out, on either side by the appropriately sized identity matrix, nothing changes. So multiplication by an identity matrix never changes anything. Um, and there's also a transposition rule. If you want to take two matrices and multiply them together, you could then proceed to transpose if you wanted. It turns out that's the same thing as individually transposing and multiplying together, but in order for everything to work, you end up reversing the order. So the quantity AB transposed is always the same thing as B transposed times A transposed. This is a, a, an absolutely crucial rule. Uh, we've seen previously that transposition is an involution, which means that if you do it twice, you don't change anything. Um, well, it's also order reversing from the perspective of matrix multiplication. So the fancy way to convey this is to say that transposition is an order reversing involution. Um, so uh, 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 th this example here uh, is absolutely crucial to pay attention to. So um, here is an example where I'm multiplying two matrices A and B together. And note that these are both two by two matrices. Well, the product of a two by two matrix with a two by two matrix is just a two by two matrix. Now for this particular A and this particular B, when I multiply them together in the order A times B, what do I produce? I produce the zero matrix. But if I switch the order, if I multiply B on the left and A on the right, so these are the same matrices, look what I get. I get something other than the zero matrix. I get something totally different. So this example is absolutely crucial to keep in our heads because what it's saying is that even if I'm allowed to switch the order of my matrices from the size perspective, switching the order could produce a totally different matrix. So we absolutely cannot rely on A times B equaling B times A. The fancy way of saying this is that matrix multiplication is not commutative or non-commutative. So if you have some complicated matrix expression where you're multiplying a bunch of things together, if we're clumsy about it, we might do something illegal. <laughs> um, so in ordinary arithmetic, the order never matters. So if I were multiplying A times B times A times B times A times B times A and everything was just a number, I might be tempted to clean everything up and say, well, that's really the same thing as A to the fourth because there's four A's here times B cubed because there's three B's here. That's fine in the world of ordinary arithmetic, but in the wor world of matrix arithmetic, this is absolutely not reliable. And the reason is because I, it, it, um, I cannot rely on A times B equaling B times A. So we have to be really careful when we're simplifying expressions with matrix products. Okay, so once we have the power of matrix multiplication, there's all kinds of interesting things we can do. One of the con constructions that will follow us throughout the whole course 
is this construction called the Gramian. This is one of my favorite concepts in the class. The Gramian of a matrix A, um, I like to label it sometimes as G, this is defined as A transpose times A. Now, the beauty of uh, uh, matrices is that A transpose times A will always be defined no matter what. Um, here's an example of a Gramian calculation. Here I have a matrix A, it's two by three. If I multiply on the left by its transpose, that would be multiplying by a three by two, totally allowed. Now, when I multiply this, um, the transpose, which is three by two, by the matrix itself, which is two by three, I produce in this situation a three by three. And I wanna take a close look at this three by three. This is not any ordinary three by three matrix. This is a Gramian. Take a look at the diagonal of this three by three matrix. If I look off the diagonal, I notice some relationships. There's a 14 in the one, two position, but there's a 14 also in the two, one position. There's a four in the one, three position, but a four also in the three, one position. And there are negative twos in the two, three and three, two positions. So what type of matrix is this? This calculation, A transpose times A for this example, is producing a symmetric matrix. And this is no accident. If I take the uh, 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 formula for the Gramian, A transpose times A, and I transpose it, remember if I'm transposing a product, I can reverse the order and apply the transpose symbol to both ingredients. So the quantity A transpose times A transposed is the same thing as the matrix on the right, A transposed, multiplied on now on the right by A transpose transpose. And we've already seen that the double transpose is equal to the original matrix. That's the involutive property of uh, transposition. So this is the same thing as A transpose times A. So it's no accident in our calculation up here that the Gramian of this two by three matrix ended up being symmetric. This will always happen. So uh, generally, if we're working with an M by N matrix, the Gramian A transpose times A will always be an N by N symmetric matrix. So that's a, a nice uh, construction that will end up being super important uh, uh, to us uh, down the road in the class. Um, now, if you wanted to, to really get into the nitty gritty here, you can use the row perspective of matrix multiplication to figure out every individual entry of your Gramian. What is the one one position of the Gramian? Remember, it's the, the formula for the Gramian is A transpose times A. Well, if I label the columns of my matrix A as um, A1, A2, down to AN, considered as vectors, the 1, 1 position of the Gramian is the inner product of that first column of A with itself. The 1, 2 position would be the inner product of the first column with the second column. The, and then if I keep going down that first row, the last entry will be the inner product of the first column with the nth column. So I can build the entire Gramian from the row perspective in this way. So I'm interpreting every single entry of the Gramian as an inner product of one of the columns of the original matrix with one of the uh, other columns of the matrix. And um, so the ij position of the Gramian is the inner product of the ith column with the jth column. And remember, if I, if I take the inner product of a vector with itself, that always produces the square length of that vector. And this is relevant to us because if I look along the diagonal here, I realize that the first position is the inner product of the first column with itself. The second position is the inner product of the second column with itself, so on and so forth, until I get to the last position on the diagonal, which is the inner product of the last column with itself. So um, if I pay attention here, what I realize is that sitting along the diagonal of the Gramian are the square lengths of all of the columns of our matrix. Great. Um, now, an another thing we can do with matrix multiplication is we can reinterpret our concept of an inner product. So um, remember, when we're working with vectors, a vector is nothing other than a matrix with a single column. So um, let's say that I had two vectors coming from Rn. If I think of these both as n by one matrices, the matrix product V transpose times W makes total sense. V transpose would be a one by N matrix and W is an N by one matrix. So what do I produce when I multiply V transpose times W? Well, this should produce a one by one matrix. So there's only one entry. And what is that entry? It should be the inner product of the first row of this object on the left with the first column of this object on the right. That is none other than the inner product of V with W. 
So this allows us to think of inner products in terms of matrix multiplication. The inner product of V with W is none other than the matrix multiplication V transposed times W. This is an extremely important insight, so I want to make sure that everybody sears this into their brain. The inner product of V with W is the same thing as the matrix multiplication V transpose times uh, W. And uh, one thing this does for us is we can actually uh, now justify something we said previously. Remember uh, this relationship? The inner product of AV with W is always the same thing as V inner product with A transpose times W. Previously, we called this the adjoint formula for inner products. The idea is that matrices can bounce back and forth inside of an inner product, but every time I move from one place to another, I transpose my matrix. We stated this earlier, but we didn't prove it. We now have the tools available to us to actually justify this theorem. So what is the inner product of AV with W? Well, we now understand inner products on the level of matrix multiplication. What we do is we transpose the first vector, that would be the quantity AV, and then we multiply by the second vector, W. But if I'm transposing the quantity A times V, remember I can distribute the transpose symbol, but I have to reverse the order. So this becomes V transpose times A transpose times W. But also remember that when I'm multiplying things together, the order I've written things down in is absolutely crucial but the way that I group the parentheses is not crucial. So instead of putting the parentheses around V transpose times A transpose, I'm going to group the parentheses around A transpose times W. So what am I doing now? I'm taking a vector V and transposing it and multiplying by this new vector, A transpose times W. That's exactly our perspective on inner products. So this is V inner product with A transpose times W. So this perspective on matrix multiplication allows us to justify a familiar result. Um, I, I just want to call uh, attention before we go here to the SAGE module on the website. Um, there's not a lot here. There, this, is basically, uh, this is only just a calculator uh, that multiplies matrices together. So if you input a matrix called A and then input a matrix called B, um, if you click evaluate, the way this calculator works is it'll print out the two matrices you input so you can verify whether or not you made a mistake and then it gives you the product of those two matrices. In this case, um, I took a two by four matrix A and multiplied on the right by this uh, uh, four by three matrix B. That should produce a two by three matrix and that specific two by three matrix is here. Um, note, if you, uh, if you violate our size conditions, so this A was um, uh, two by four, so if, uh, B has to have four rows. If I were to delete one of the columns from A here, that would make A a two by three matrix. And if I tried to evaluate again, A is now a two by three, B is a four by three, so I can't multiply these together anymore. You'll note that the code throws an error. So, um, uh, uh.